who is a senior level designer. In addition to creating uh, campaign missions, he also implemented all the AI difficulty from easy to brutal. So if there's anyone out there that had a hard time playing a mission on brutal difficulty, you now know what the guy looks like. <laughs> and next to uh, Richard is Jason Huck. Jason Huck is a very talented level designer of ours. <laughs> that created uh, many, many, many of our campaign missions. You might uh, recognize some of his work from uh, defending the colonists against the Protoss purifier mothership to possibly meeting Tosh for the first time on the lava world and you're playing greed and you're fighting the Zerg and dodging the lava. Or maybe you remember his work from when he was punking down mercenaries and collecting scraps with the Vulture. And next to Jason Huck, is Matt Gocher. Matt Gocher is another talented level designer of ours. In addition to creating campaign missions, he was also the one that implemented all the tech purchase videos, the research videos, and the mercenary videos. And next to Matt Gocher is Justin Clinchu. Justin is our data specialist, and he and the, the other data specialists work inside the data editor, which is a part of the StarCraft II editor. And if you're not very familiar with what this is, uh, please stick around, because he's going to be talking about this pretty shortly. And so shortly after we had launched the Wings of Liberty campaign, uh, we changed focus. We've always been a big fan of uh, supporting the community, and we wanted to continue the support. And so we felt the best way we could do this from a level design standpoint was to create custom maps. And I'm here to tell you that we didn't create custom maps just to uh, compete with the community. We actually really love what the community does. Uh, we get excited every day when we go on Battle.net and we're kind of going on to custom games and we're seeing what you guys are doing. And that really, you know, it really makes it exciting for us. But the real goal for us is really to improve the, the editor, the tools that you guys are using to make the, uh, the custom maps. And so how we started this process is I grabbed all these guys and we went into a room and we started talking about game types. So we started asking, what do we think was popular on Battle.net? We started talking about the things that we really enjoy. And so we would start writing things down, like uh, what about a, a, a puzzle map? Or what about tower defense? So we'd write TD up there, uh, hero arena, uh, a Dota map, RPG maps, right? So we just kept on talking about this list of uh, game types. Because the next process was I told these guys that they need to create a custom map. And the focus of the custom map was really to pick apart a part of the editor that we wanted to focus on. Uh, example of this is custom heroes and custom abilities. We wanted to know how difficult it was for you guys to create custom heroes. So we had to make sure that one of the custom maps was using custom heroes. Uh, another example was the inventory system. It's not something we got to use a whole lot during the Wings of Liberty campaign. So we wanted to take a closer look at this and make sure that one of the custom maps was using the, the inventory system. Uh, another thing we wanted to do was work on the custom dialog buttons. Uh, this is basically allows you guys to create your own custom UI. It's not entirely new to the StarCraft II editor. We did have this with the Warcraft III editor, but it was really hard to use. And we, it was very difficult, and so we didn't see a lot of people using it. And so we made sure that we focused a little bit this time with StarCraft II. And by creating a custom app that was using this, we figured we could start generating a more list of ideas to improve. So now that you guys understand why we're creating custom maps, uh, we're going to take you a little bit down the road as to how we approach the design of these custom maps. So the first thing that we focused on was really the fun factor. Uh, the fun factor, if you're not sure, is basically the mission mechanic or the game mechanic. This is what drives the game. This is like the focal point of your map. This is really what you, the player expects to be doing when they play your map. And the reason why it's really important to find this fun factor quickly is you need to, you need to concentrate all your energy into this fun factor, right? Because as a creative map maker, I know you guys have a lot of cool ideas that you want to put into your map. And if you start trying to cram too many different game mechanics or fun factors into it, really what happens is you start diluting the fun. as something that we say here at work all the time, which is concentrated coolness. So if you could get your map up running quickly, not worry about all the polish or the tuning yet, just really find the fun factor and build your map around that. The uh, next thing I want to talk about is easy to learn. Uh, before you use a picture of a tutorial, because we spent a very long time creating a mission that taught a person that's never played an RTS before how to play just 
very basic, they're very simple, right? It's like selecting units, uh, moving a unit, attacking a unit, building a unit. It's very simple stuff. But the point I'm trying to make here today is that you guys don't get to create a map to teach a person how to play another map, right? You have game experience about 35, 45 minutes, and you really have about two minutes to teach your players on how to play your map. I don't know if you guys have ever jumped on to Battle.net and you've tried a custom map you've never played before and you're kind of fumbling around for three minutes, four minutes or so. You probably already lost this map and you don't get the defeat screen until another 25 minutes later and you're probably pretty frustrated at this point. Um, chances of you going back to play that map are going to start sliding. So as map makers, I know you guys really want to have people to come play your map over and over again because that's what, you know, that's the thrill, that's what we get out of making these maps. Uh, an example of easy to learn is a tower defense game type. It's uh, very organically teaches a person how to play in a really easy way. Uh, if you're not sure of what a tower defense is, it's, it's pretty simple. You, you start the map and there's one unit. Usually you have an option to build one tower or two towers and there's a countdown timer, you know, and it's ticking down. So as a new user, you place one tower down and all of a sudden the timer goes to zero and a wave of units come running out and this tower kills everything. So as a new user, you figure it out real quickly. I build towers, it kills units. When the timer hits zero, more units come out. So this is just something to think about when you guys are working on your maps, to really think about that first two minutes and how to slow down the information and slow down the gameplay so that the person has a lot of fun because if that happens, the chances of them coming back to play it are gonna keep increasing. Another thing I want to talk about is feedback. Uh, feedback is incredibly important for any development of any game or any mission. Uh, this is basically at the point where you think your map is done and you're kind of figuring, what do I do now, right? This is the point where I tell you that you need to go actively go online and start looking for feedback. Battle.net pr produces uh, or allows you to publish maps for people out there to go ahead and start getting direct feedback. Uh, another way to do this is to get online and start doing searches on, on the internet. If you start doing searches for StarCraft II custom maps, I guarantee you there's tons of websites out there with people just like you creating maps who are wanting to share their knowledge, right? Because as people start sharing their knowledge and giving this information to each other, that means the quality of these missions are going to start going up. So when you go into Battle.net, the experience you're going to have there playing these maps are going to start getting better and better. So, you know, this is the point where you really need to get feedback and you really need to actually act upon that feedback. You know, you need to sit there and make changes to your map based on the feedback. Don't just think your map is the greatest thing ever. I mean, these people are wanting to talk about your map, so li really listen to what they have to say and make changes based on that. And I guarantee your map will start getting better and better. Now, I know I've kind of gone through this real quickly, and the reason is because I didn't want to steal the thunder from these guys. They uh, spent a lot of time making these maps and a lot of hours, and they're very excited to show it today at BlizzCon. And they're really more excited if you guys come up after this discussion and start asking questions. So please make sure you, get, you guys hit these guys up because they're really excited to talk about their maps. Uh, without further ado, this is Richard. Hello, everyone. My name is Richard. Um, for those of you who don't know, I used to be a Warcraft 3 modder under the handle of Missing Tooltip and I used to make uh, maps like Extreme Candy Wars and Skibby Tower Defense. Uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> um, I'm here today to talk about the design process I used to make my latest mod, Left to Die. Left to Die is a cooperative version of the campaign mission I'm sure you guys have played, Outbreak. In Outbreak, the player had to defend against infested civilians, aka zombies, at nighttime, and then during the day, press out and destroy the infested structures. After we shipped the Wings of Liberty campaign, we received a lot of really positive reviews, whether it was magazines or forums or my friends telling me that they really liked this mission. And they all had one thing to say in common. They love killing zombies. So going off of what Matt said about focusing on the fun factor first, I decided to make special zombies. Um, it's kind of obvious, but I drew a lot of inspiration from Valve's first person shooter, Left 4 Dead. In Left 4 Dead, the special zombies actually had a lot of personality quirks that led to really memorable gameplay moments. However, for design and, and legal reasons, I couldn't just copy-paste them into my map. I had to StarCraft their design. For instance, there's a fat zombie creature called a Boomer in Left 4 Dead that would sneak up onto your character and explode, doing all sorts of really nasty stuff. 
That works really well in a first-person shooter, but not so much in a real-time strategy game where you have so many different units that can see all around them, and they automatically fire at anything that moves. So I had to change the design to make it my own. I repeated this process a couple times until I had my own little army of special zombies, and then I thought it would be really cool to reward the player for killing them. That's when I invented Zerg Biomass. Zerg Biomass, in a nutshell, is a resource that you collect and you unlock technology with. Now, I'd like to go over some of the design behind Zerg Biomass because I think it really sheds some light as to how we design things. You get Zerg Biomass when you destroy special zombies or when you destroy infested structures. That's really important because when you destroy special zombies, that happens pretty much automatically at 